went to synagogue. I, I believed in God, but I can't say that I really felt that God spoke back to me. I, I would talk to God at night um, and in the synagogue during the Amidad, which is the silent prayer, and I would sing Hebrew songs. I didn't always know what they meant, but I sang them. And I went to Israel and I had my bar mitzvah. So we were conservative Jews. We were not Orthodox. We didn't have the kippah all the time or the payases, but we, this was strong in our tradition. Anyway, later on in my life, um, I went to college and I had a study abroad program in my freshman year and I went to Japan. I learned J Japanese and I went to Japan. I went to Tokyo for a few months and that was a very exciting experience. And uh, before that time, I also had an atheist girlfriend uh, from Croatia, actually, uh, traveling in Croatia. I met her, and uh, we spent some time together. So this was, this was a wonderful opportunity, my first real girlfriend. And then I went to Japan, and um, there I met uh, an economics professor. And he was telling me economics from a Japanese and German perspective and it, it made more sense, or the things he was saying sounded true. And I kept asking him about it, I kept wanting to know more. And uh, we would meet, uh, we met for coffee uh, one time, and he explained about the economics behind uh, some of Japanese recession and development and some truths of this world, and he even led uh, to talk about the Book of Revelations. and. Um, and banking and other things. But uh, in the end, he told me about Jesus Christ and he said, you know, this is the truth of this world, the truth of economics and the truth of this world. And that, uh, that he is the son of God, that he is who he said he was. And I said, at that moment, it made sense. And that truth struck me and I said, yeah, I believe that, that makes sense to me. And he had to go off to do other work. But at that moment, uh, when I left that cafe, I felt this incredible joy. The sun was incredibly bright. I was jumping up and down. I was crying and laughing that this God I had prayed to all my life was real. And, and it, it felt real. It was a, a spiritual, emotional experience as well. I, I was dancing on the Japanese subway, uh, uh, telling people about this this Jesus that I barely knew, but that somehow had opened up this, this spiritual experience, and it was very exciting. I was singing my old Hebrew songs, Ma Tovu, and it's just, uh, I kind of knew, um, you know, that this was exciting, that maybe, you know, the devil was waiting for me, but also even more practically speaking, my, my mom and parents wouldn't be very happy about this whole Jesus thing, you know, that they felt was for the other people, the Gentiles, you know, not for the Jews. Um, but, but as I mentioned, the God that I was feeling was, was, was my God, the one I was praying to all the life. I mean, it, it, I didn't have that distinction, only that through this Jesus person, I was now experiencing God talking back, in a sense. So um, when I got home, I received, you know, I had some materials, uh, some Christian materials, and I kind of hid them. I didn't really want anybody to know. I didn't want my atheist girlfriend to know who was coming that summer, and I didn't want, uh, I didn't want my family to know at that time. Eventually, I got back to my university the next year, and I, uh, I was walking along, and there was a girl, an older girl, you know, kind of smiling, and I said, well, what are you smiling about? And she said, uh, well, I'm a believer. And I said, a believer in what? And she said, a uh, believer in Jesus. And I'm like, oh, me too. I believe it too, you know? And she invited me to a small group, a small house church. And uh, we were singing and celebrating uh, the Lord and again, and Jesus. And again, I felt the same experiences, the same uh, um, love, emotion, a joy that I had felt in Japan. So I felt like, yeah, I'm, this is the right way to go. So I kept going in that, in that way with that group. And eventually I told, uh, I told my atheist girlfriend, hey, you know, this is exciting and things. And she was not that excited. <laughs> she was, thought I had gone crazy. Then I eventually got up the, the courage to tell my mom. I was in a, 
in a, uh, uh, a store and I, I said to her, Mom, I, I found this new religion because I didn't, I didn't know how to express that I was a follower of Jesus or something like that. Now, I mean, I didn't, identity was difficult and, um, and for me to understand who I was. And, and who this God was, you know, at this early stage. And anyway, she said, well, as long as it's not uh, Islam and Christianity, it's okay. And then she thought about it, and then she said, well, as long as it's not Christianity, it's okay. And I said, well, it's Christ. And, and she was very upset. She was crying and yelling. And I understand why, because this is her traditions. This is what she knows. And she was afraid, you know, what if I had gone off and found a cult or things like that. I mean, I get it. I get it, you know, now. But it was very hard, you know, and uh, hard for her, hard for me. Uh, she was talking even with my atheist girlfriend at the time. She, they were talking about how to get me back, you know, how to stop this craziness. Um, but I, I continued to feel things along the way. I continued to experience the Lord and, and His goodness. Um, and uh, and then I, I, I continued to grow in boldness. At one point, my mom wanted me to see uh, an Orthodox rabbi, so I went to see this Orthodox rabbi, and he sat down for six hours telling me why Jesus was not the Messiah, not the Christ, um, and even bringing out a Mormon Bible to sort of say, this is not real, this is all fantasy, uh, this is lies, basically. And so I prayed to the God, I said, God, you know, God of that night, I was very distraught because maybe I had imagine things, you know, so I said, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, the, the God I know, you tell me who you are. The next day I got up, I was still very depressed. Uh, even my, my dog wouldn't go out with me. <laughs> and uh, I stumble upon a church and, and the church is open. I didn't know it was a church at the time, actually. It was just a building and it was open, but it turned out to be a church. I walked inside and it was empty and there were rows of, uh, of benches. And I walked down the, the center aisle and I walked up to the podium and on the podium was the Bible opened and it was open to Isaiah 53. And the Orthodox rabbi had told me, because at the end of our experience, I said, well, what about Isaiah 53? Because this is pointing to Jesus. And he said to me, no, this is about the Jewish people. And, and, and so I was still very confused when I looked at this on the podium, whether this was about Jesus or about the Jewish people. And I prayed, God, help me. And a man walked down the center aisle. He was just dressed in a sweater, uh, pants, and he walked down the center aisle and he said, and I, I said to him before he said anything, I said to him, why do people have to go to hell? And, and I was crying. And at that moment, I felt a, a peace come over me, a spiritual peace come over my mind. Uh, and he said to me, he said to me, you should talk to people you trust and let's pray. And he didn't go through the Bible and explain every, you know, why Jesus was the Christ, but he just prayed with me. And I felt again that peace of God, that this was right. And this Orthodox rabbi this is not correct what he said. And, um, and I had a lot of joy and, uh, and I was more bold. Later, I, I had a chance to talk to my atheist girlfriend more in London. And, um, you know, she was on the verge of breaking up with me, not breaking up with me, not sure what this craziness was. And I said to her, listen, you're atheist, but why don't you just ask and pray? Just pray with me, ask the Lord, say, you know, if, show me, show me who you are, you know, even though I don't know who you are, I don't believe in you, show me, show me something, give me some evidence. And we prayed that at night, and the next day, um, uh, she, we were on a bus in London, and she felt this extremely love uh, for me and from above, you know, for this God and she goes you know I I felt something and I, I didn't feel anything at the time but she felt something dramatic I guess it took quite a bit of time as well of our struggle um, and then she eventually came 
to my university and she she heard from my pastor about who Jesus was and and led up to her and she she then started to actually believe in Jesus as well as the Son of God and from there we left to move to Croatia Rom really in itself transformed me uh, after I became a believer I met Tiomir um, and he invited me to come to Renewing Our Minds in Croatia. And while I was there with Ivona, we told them that we were followers of Jesus. And they that aligned, surprisingly, this aligned completely with their ideas too, to take, take it out of religion and just be about who Jesus was. And so it was really funny that that, that kind of you know aligned together. And then I really felt like, okay, my identity after the program, as the program was progressing, my identity being Jewish was okay. And my identity being a believer in Christ was okay. And I made reconciliation even with a, a German uh, uh, woman who was there. And we talked about, you know, different things about the past, you know, because it had been before that, you know, I thought about the Holocaust and anybody around today either had a grandparent, you know, any German around today probably had a grandparent or someone who was, you know, on the opposite side in the, in the war. And, uh, and, and this lady here, you know, at Rom kind of represented that as well. But, but in talking to how wonderful she was, uh, Claudia is her name, how wonderful she was, we, I could, reconcile these issues. I could forgive whatever past, you know, history, and I could love the German people. Why not, you know? But before this, I don't think I had that. I always had this kind of little bit of a distance, you know, to Germans, and, but now I, I really care about them. As well, the reconciliation happened on the, on the Jewish level as well, because, uh, you know, initially I had these bad experiences with my mom and family and this Orthodox but now I, I've come to love my Jewishness. I celebrate Passover. I celebrate Hanukkah. I love my Jewish people. I love Israel because there are many Jews there. That's, that's, that's the Israeli people. I love them, you know? I feel part of them in many ways. So with that, I feel like God has redeemed many aspects of my Jewishness, you know? He's the truth. When he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. He means it, and it's true. I was led from economics, which seems completely unrelated to Jesus, but it really made truth in revelations that he is the way, in, even in economics, and at the end of the road, that's who he is. And I think whatever road you take, even through Muslim religious background or I, I mean I'm not aware or even Jewish theology or something the, Jewish theology talks about the Messiah if your truth if you want to find truth I believe that in the end is Jesus and at all things the world over truth is synonymous with with Jesus there are lies and there is the truth and I believe that he is the truth and he is the way so if it if it bothers you you know, about this Jesus, about this Christianity. I understand that, but he's also the truth. He's also the way. He's, he's known by different names, in a sense, but uh, it's maybe a little bit more spiritual, but that is true. Pure truth is Jesus Christ. One, one other thing I would say to people who believe in Jesus but have a struggle with it because of the Muslim or Jewish background, is that, um, is that God is the one who keeps you. So once you make the commitment to Jesus, as you heard in my story, he's the one who found other people and showed me that he was real. I, I didn't you know, pursue him necessarily. I mean, I, I kind of, but I, I was really lost about it. But he brought people into my life and confirmed that he really was Christ. Who he said he was. So this was very exciting for me.